Hello, Shumai, Penham Da, a Croiso e Gamri, Croiso e Chanel. Welcome to Wales, w welcome to my channel. The Hano Craig J. Davis, m and my name is Craig J. A, a Davis, a Croiso e Chanel, welcome to my channel. Okay, um, this is a sermon, and um, this is a sermon about alcohol intoxication. Now, I have spoken about this before in the past, but God has spoken to me about this again. And what God has taught me is that it is always a good idea to update sermons that you have done in the past so it keeps us all in check about the dangers of sin and drunkenness is a sin now before any once calls me a hypocrite because i have been drunk in the past in fact there are <laughs> there are videos of me from the past when i've been absolutely steaming and okay, I perfectly understand that. I know exactly where you are coming from. But here's the, the thing. That was the past, not now. And I'm not drunk now. I haven't had a drink for nearly six weeks. So no, I am not a hypocrite. I have repented. That's the one thing that I have learned about human beings is that they like to bring up the past to use against them yes people like to bring up the, the the past to use against against the people that they are having a, a go at so yeah and i am n not here to judge other people who have been drunk now According to popular belief, God is not against people drinking alcohol. No, you are not hearing things. You have heard me correctly. God is n n n not against people drinking alcohol. After all, what what was Jesus' first uh, m a miracle? Turning water into a wine. And yes, it was wine, not grape juice. Show me in scripture where it says grape juice. It doesn't. It says a, a wine. And what is a wine? Fermented grape juice. Meaning the sugar in the wine has, has converted into alcohol. Hence, wine. Okay. So, even though God is not against drinking alcohol, why is he against people getting drunk? Well, let's define drunk, drunk thus, because I, I am a firm believer that there is a fine line between having a good time and being, absolu and being absolutely ill from being too intoxicated, okay? There is a difference uh, between having a few drinks in your local pub to uh, to um, to um, to mingle and to play pool or snooker or or, or play a darts and to and to um and to um catch up on up-to-date news with your friends okay that is acceptable but there is a difference between having a few drinks now and again i'm having a fire alarm tested okay hopefully it'll be on for 30 seconds there we are right yeah i had um fire men coming over to a day and they were and they're testing the um the fire alarm where was I? Yes, okay, so there is a difference between having a few drinks now and again, okay, and socialising in a pub 
to being absolutely so hammered where it is destroying your finances and destroying your physical and mental health and to the point where you are becoming an absolute pest to everyone around you because let's face it shall we people let us face up to the truth there is no political correctness here nobody likes a drunk nobody likes a drunk guards drunks are nuisances they are pests why because they uh, make fools of uh, themselves if, if, if they can't take care of themselves so other people around them have to feel as if they're picking up the pieces until they even get to the point where they say right that's it I'm done I can't do this anymore I've got my own life to focus on being a drunk right abusing alcohol especially when you become an alcoholic it isolates you it isolates you from friends family work colleagues etc nobody wants to bother you and to anyone out there who says that it is okay to get drunk show me where it says that in here you won't find it anywhere yes as i said there's no harm in drinking alcohol as long as you can control it and as long as it doesn't take over your life and we will find this now in the in the scriptures and talking about alcohol um I'm making a fool out of you it says this year in the first scripture that we're going to read so if you have your bibles uh, with you please turn with me to proverbs chapter 20 verse 1 so that is proverbs chapter 20 verse 1 wine is a mocker strong drink is a brawler and whoever is led astray by it is not wise and do you understand that if not i'll read it again wine is a mocker strong drink is a brawler whoever is led astray by it is not wise in in other words if you become if 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 you become drunk you are not wise if you were wise you were only wise when you were sober why because you're in you're in your rational mind as soon as you become a drunk your inner your inhibitions are no longer there and you become a fool drunkenness turns you into a fool how many people have you seen out there and even yourselves have you become a fool have you how many times have you seen other people out there including yourselves including me right where you've been so drunk you have made a total and utter fool of you yourself and also as well being drunk it makes you stupid people do stupid things when they are drunk such as dancing on tables falling over and breaking a leg or running out in front of traffic or falling in front of a traffic right so and what it says here in the first scripture wine is a poker yes you make a fool of yourself and then people then start to make fun of you people start to mock you strong drink is is a brawler strong drink what is that referring to very strong drinks now every time i read that i think of spirits that is the alcoholic beverages by the way and uh, and and not and not a ghost okay right so but 
It's very unlikely that they had spirits in those uh, uh, days. However, that isn't to say that they that they still didn't have a very strong ale, very strong beer, or very strong wine. But in this uh, day and age, we can refer strong drink to spirits. And I find it very interesting what it says here, right? Strong drink is is a brawler. And what comes to my um, <laughs> mind here is whiskey. I have known so many people who get violent from drinking whiskey. They, right? they get drunk on a whiskey. And what happens? They want to start the fucking world, don't they? They want to come on in. What are you looking at, huh? Come and have a go if you think you are the nothing. Ooh, well, right? They think they're rocky and they think they're gonna take on the world. Oh, I'm gonna beat the Bullet Creed in the ring. Right? Of course, they are, de- they are deluded because that's what alcohol does. It takes you into, into fantasy world and then you are at risk then of getting hurt, right? Getting beaten up if you start on other people. Don't be surprised when other people retaliate. It is why it says in 1 Peter, in chapter 5, verse 7, be sober, be vigilant, because the devil is a roaring spirit looking for ever he can to (laughs) devour. And what it's saying now, what... God is telling us there is that a drunk person is a vulner- is a vulnerable person, especially if you're on your if you're on your own and you're drunk out there, right? Out on the streets, right? You're stumbling about the place. All of your senses are impaired, right? And you don't know who's around the, the, you, you don't know who's around the corner, right? It's a big and nasty evil world out there. And there's some people who can't give a rat's ass about you, yeah? If they see that you're drunk, then it's a very increased chance that you're going to get assaulted. Let's turn now to Prof to, right? Still in Proverbs, chapter 21, verse... No, sorry, chapter 23. Uh, hello, a bookmark. Bookmark, and right, there you can go. Right, Proverbs, chapter 23, from verse 21. That is Proverbs, chapter 23, from verse 21. <laughs> For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty and drowsiness will clothe a man in drags. Oh dear, I'll read that again. Proverbs chapter 23 in verse 21. That that is Proverbs chapter 23 to verse 21. For the drunk guards and the glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. If you want to be poor, be a drunk. If you want to waste all your finances to the point where you're at risk of being homeless because you can't pay the bills, you can't pay your rent, you can't pay your landlord, you can't pay um, whatever it is that, that you, you need paying off, then be a drunk. If you hate being wealthy, if you hate being rich, be a, be a drunk. Drinking is expensive. Especially in pubs and even in off licenses and supermarkets if you buy enough alcohol on a regular basis. Even though it's still cheaper than pubs, at least it is in this country, 
Great Great Britain anyway, right? If you continue to to drink alcohol all the time or on a regular basis, you will be skint. And then it says um um glutton. Now glutton can refer to food, but what I believe it's but what I believe the word glutton is also re- referring to is is um drinking okay for the glutton f- sorry for the drunkard and the glutton right if you're a drunk that itself is a form of gluttony you are being a glutton through excessive alcohol consumption for the drunkard and the gluttony will come to poverty and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. Yes, it will. But as soon as you stop drinking, you'll be surprised the amount of money you will save. Um, okay, now, Proverbs chapter 23, again, and also, in, also again, is it the same chapter? Yes, it is. Also, again, right, Staying in chapter 23 in Proverbs. Please turn with me from verse 29 to verse 35. So that is Proverbs, verse 29 to verse 35. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has a contentations who has complaints who has wounds without cause who has read thus of eyes those who linger long at the wine those who go in search of mixed wine do not look on the wine when it is red when it sparkles in the cup when it swirls around smoothly at the last it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper your eyes will see strange things that's very interesting isn't it and your heart will utter preserve sorry preserve things yes you will be like one who lies around in the mists of the sea or like one who lies at the top of the mast, saying, They have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I will not feel it. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? I find that very, very disturbing but also so true about alcoholism so let's start from verse 29 who has a woe okay now for starters what does the what does the word woe mean it means utter sadness at a pitiful thus, at a patheticness. And then it goes on to say, who has sorrow? What is s- sorrow? Grief, at a sheer grief and regret. Who has contentations? I don't know what that word means, but we'll go through all the other words who has who has complaints who has wounds without cause who has read thus of eyes drunks drunks are very sad drunks are full of sorrow drunks are full of con- contentions i'll have to look that up when i get the chance who has complaints drunks who has wounds without cause drunks how let me well we'll analyze this now who has a woe drunks 
Why are drunks full of a, a woe? Because there's nothing more miserable than being a drunk. It takes everything from you, your health, your finances, your friends, your family and your job. Who are sorrow? Again, drunks. Drunks are full of grief. Grief that they can't stop drinking. They're full of guilt. Who has wounds without cause? Again, drunks. Drunks end up hurting themselves and they cannot remember how they did it because they were, well, drunk. Who has read the of eyes? Drunks. Why? Have you seen what excessive regular drinking does to a person's face? I've, se I've seen it in myself when I used to be a regular drinker. It turns your eyes red. It turns your face red. It, it also it gives you a, p a puffy face and a, a bulbous nose. Why? Because alcohol is a poison and it dehydrates you. This is why it has negative effects on the skin. Then we're going to verse 30. Those who linger long at the at the wine. What is that talking about? Cravings, a physical and a psychologically dependence on alcohol. They are lingering long for the next drink. Those who go in search of mixed wine. Yes, drunks want to get high on on alcohol as quickly as possible. So. What do they do? They get multiple drinks. They they mix them so they can get drunk quicker. And then it warns us here: Do not look on the wine when it is red. Now, what it's saying here is it is warning us to stay away from being drunk. When the sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly, blah, blah, okay, right, so that's saying the same th thing. Now in verse 32, at the last it bites like a serpent. Yes, being a, a drunk guard catches up uh, with you. Being drunk catches up with you and it can hit you like a ton of bricks. You can feel Sober one minute, t t despite the fact that you have been drinking, and then wham, it hits you like a sledgehammer. Hence why it says, at, at the last it bites uh, like a serpent, and stings like a viper. What is the stinging uh, like a viper? The hangover. Your eyes will see strange things. Yes. What is that? The DTs. Delirium tremens. Drunks who have been drunk for such a long time, especially those who go on multiple binges for days or weeks on end, they start to see things. Why? Because alcohol causes brain damage. It damages the brain and that's why you start to hallucinate you're seeing things that are not there uh so your eyes will see strange things yeah your heart will utter and your heart will utter preserve things yes when you're drunk you're not in a your rational um um, you're not an irrational mind and so it can turn you into a pervert case in point porn yes you will be like one who lies down in the mists of the sea what was i talking about collapsing because he's so drunk you just collapse your body cannot take any more alcohol abuse and then it goes on to say, or 
like one who lies at the top of the mast, saying, They have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. What do, what do you think that says? When drunk people get so drunk, the bodies become numb, and so they can't feel whether they have hurt themselves or thought or if other people have hurt them by beating them up in the streets or in their own homes. Hence why it says, they have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. And this, right, and the last verse here, in verse 35, I think is the saddest. When shall I awake that I may, that I may seek another drink? Let that sink in, yeah? When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? If that isn't talking about alcoholics right there, I don't know what is. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? They're getting withdrawal symptoms, aren't they? As soon as they wake up, they're shaking, sweating. Uh, you know, they got the shakes, they got the sweats, they got heart palpitations. They need another drink. And they, and they no longer want a drink because they enjoy it. They have to have a drink to function. When shall I awake? Meaning, when will the time come when I will wake up from my drunken stupor that I may seek another drink you know for those of you for people out there right who say that the bible today is so irrelevant because we are and now living in the 21st century so we don't need the Bible any, 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 we don't need the Bible any more to warn us over such things. Well, I think from what I've just read so far is relevant. Alcohol abuse was just as prevalent then as it is today. In fact, I would say it's even worse to today because unlike then, today, there is, there is a lot for choice on alcoholic drinks. And unlike then, alcohol today is available 24-7. But still, apart from all, all that, the... Drunken behaviour is the same as it was then as it is today. So yes, I would say that the Bible is still relevant in this day and, and age. But then again, I'm a Christian, so I would say that. Right, turn on to our next one. Okay, right. Proverbs. Um, it... <laughs> Again in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 31, and we will read, okay, we will read from verse, from verse 1 to verse 7. So that is Proverbs chapter 21 from verse 1 to verse 7. What, uh, and okay, and these are the words of King L Lemel, the utterance which his uh, brother taught him. What, uh, my son, and what son of um, uh, 
son of my a womb and what son of my vows do not give your strength to to a women nor your ways to that which it destroy kings it is a thought for kings o lemel it is a thought for kings to drink wine nor for princes intoxicating drink lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all afflicted give strong drink to him who is perishing and a wine to those who are bitter of heart let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more okay right well what it's saying here is if people are in pain whether that's physical or psychological they drink why to blank out the pain hence why it says in the last verse and remember his misery no more people who are full of bitter and, and and anger drink hence why it says and wine to those who are bitter of heart uh, give strong drink to him who is perishing and pervert the law and and pervert the justice and and pervert the justice of all the afflicted what the senior as a, a well if we go uh, back to verse 4 is it a thought for kings o lemel is it not for kings to drink wine nor for princes intoxicate and drink lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted what the senior is that kings and princes shouldn't drink alcohol why because kings are in charge of nations so kings should be sober to have a rational mind to to make reasonable and lawful decisions you can't do that when you're drunk it's impossible why because your thinking is impaired and same goes for princes because princes should learn from their from their fathers who are the kings and kings should also be sober to set a, r- a right example to their sons and who are the sons princes where was he now okay and uh we'll go to Isaiah. all right Isaiah chapter 5 verse el- 11 and here it is also talking about the sadness of um, of um, and here it is also talking about the sadness of um, a morning drinking woe to those again that that, that would uh, uh, woe yeah woe to those who rise early in the um, um, uh, in the um, morning that they may follow intoxicating drink, who continue until night, till wine inflames them. I'll say that again. If I can stop stuttering, like the village idiots. Chapter 5, verse 11. No, I will um, s- s- see him doing it now. Uh, side chapter 5, verse el- 11. Woe to those who rise early in the morning, that they may follow intoxicating drink, who continue until who continue until night, until wine inflames them. And think we will. Uh, God, I've been honest for over half hour, right? And I think. We will end it on Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 26. Right, from what I'm about to read, please tell me, yeah? Any any people who are watching this, 
and to have been drunk in the past, especially those who've been absolutely steaming. Please tell me if you can relate to this by leaving your comments in the comment section below. If we turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 48 and we will read and we will read just verse 26, okay? So that is Isaiah chapter 48 verse 26. And make him drunk, because he exalted himself against the Lord. A, m a, m a mob shall wallow in his vomit, and he shall also and he shall also be in a Jerusalem. I'll read that again. And make him drunk. Because he exalted again, because he exalted himself against the Lord, a bobe shall wallow in his vomit, and he shall and he shall also be in derision. How many of those have vomited after being so drunk for for some time? Or even just one night. It was a problem even back then. Dr drunk people were vomiting then from being so drunk. And why do drunk people vomit? Because alcohol is a poison to the body. And the body wants to get rid of it in any which way it can. In fact, no, I, yes, I know it's a long video. This is going to be the longest sermon I've ever uh, done so far. Let's turn to a sire, not sire. Um, what was it called now? Ephesians, right? Go to Ephesians. In the New Testament. Right, I'm here. Right, Ephesians chapter 5, yeah? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Ephesians 5, verse n n n 19. Uh, so, so, sorry, um, we will start from verse 18. To verse nineteen, so no, actually, I know. Sorry again. We will read to verse twenty-one. Okay, so that's Ephesians chapter five, from verse eighteen to verse twenty-one. And do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the fear of a God. So in verse 18, it says what it says. Do not be drunk with wine, but instead be filled with the Holy Spirit and given thanks to a God through, uh, through psalms and hymns. We will end it now. And one Peter. One Peter chapter five. Yeah. One Peter. Simpson James. One Peter. Uh, 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. 
Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. As I said earlier, because I mentioned the scripture earlier, and this could not be any more straightforward. This could not be any more crystal clear. Yeah, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. A drunk person is a, vun is a vulnerable person. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't think I have to explain what that means. I think it's self-explanatory. Okay, um, but as I said, um, there is no harm in actually drinking alcohol. But, you know, keep it safe if you can. But obviously, if you can't say if you're a recovering alcoholic, then obviously I would advise you and God would advise you to keep it at arm's length and give it a wide berth and just keep, a, you know, Avoid it like the plague. Try and keep away from it as soon as possible. Okay, please comment. Please subscribe. Please don't hesitate to hit the like button. And to my brothers and sisters in Christ, if I do not get to see you in this l a lifetime, I shall see you all in our Father's kingdom. I thank you all and God bless you all in Jesus' precious name. Amen.